when the representative side started to come. So you, when did, when did you play your first? You said nineteen forty, but when was your next representative game after? Oh, that was, came back after the war. That was nineteen forty six. We went to Queensland. That was when. Uh, the, the, so you were playing for New South Wales, or? Oh yes, yeah. That, that was when there was the Wolf Carney Tweedale front row playing for the Waratahs. Okay. Yeah. And so, how many War how many New South Wales games would you have played? Oh, only about thirteen. Okay. Yeah. Very, very, <laughs> very few because the whole I mean uh, the whole thing was different in those days. The only representative fixtures uh, each year were the New South Wales New, New South Wales Queensland, and uh, up till that time. There were also, also Victoria were included, but Victoria never ever came back to, into the regular annual competition. So was there tribalism then between Queensland and New South Wales, or was that just that's a recent phenomenon? No, yeah. there's all. <laughs> On the field we hated their guts, but, but off the field we were the best of friends. So from there, when was your first game for Australia then? When did you get chosen for Australia? Well, the, the 1946, that was when the international competition started again. And uh, uh, on this, on, on the Pacific part of the world, uh, it resolved really around Australia and New Zealand. So your first game was against New Zealand? Oh yes, in 1946. So in Australia or in New Zealand? That was in New Zealand. We played 12 games including two tests. So when was the first game in New Zealand for Australia? Oh, the first test I should imagine. Was that yeah, it was, it was a, we played it at Dunedin. I can't tell you the exact date, but it was played at Dunedin. Uh, I, I don't know that it was called the House of Pain, but it was certainly painful. Was it? Painful for me that day because I dislocated my shoulder in the first test. Uh, so, uh, um, so did you play the full game, the 80 minutes? Or? No, no, I played, uh, I did it late in the first half and uh, they replaced me. But to that stage, there no replacements were allowed. But the start of the new era, you might say, after the war, they decided that players in the first half who needed a replacement could be replaced. Not in the second half. Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, I might have done this in the 39th minute, so I was replaceable. Oh, okay. <coughs> so in that game, do you remember the score? or? Did yes, I remember the score, but not that I, I'd like to be asked. It was 33 to 8 uh, in favour of the All Blacks. But uh, the All Blacks, after, uh, when the war finished, the All Blacks immediately sent over a team <coughs> to England, which they called the Kiwis. And they were, they were, by the time we played them the following year, they were a lot of hardened footballers. And we were a lot of in inexperienced kids as far as, as far as experience was concerned. Uh, and, uh, uh, they put the cleaner through us, 33 to 8. But we played the same team a fortnight later and they beat us 14 to 10 and we scored two tries to their one. So we were had a, we had a team in New Zealand in 46 which had terrific talent, particularly in the backs. So it was Trevor Allen and Trevor, that one? Trevor Allen, yeah, Trevor Allen, Cyril Berg, Max Howell, Terry McBride, all kids, Charlie Easties, Charlie Easties, 21 years of age. Uh, they only... So he was the front, the front row? The, the, well, the, the front row uh, for the test in New Zealand were uh, uh, Wally Dawson from Manly, he was a hooker. Um, Bob McMaster, Wallaby Bob, he was uh, on the other side of the scrum and I was... I was there also. Okay. So that was. So a, Nick Shahady wasn't there then? He's Nick came in the following year. Nick didn't make it in 46, but he was only a, a 19 year old kid then too. So. Oh. <laughs> so from there, when was the next time you came back? 
So we came back, yeah, we came back. And then you back, went back to club football, and then when did you go to England? Is there, was there well, more tests in Australia then, or was that the... Yeah, sure, well, uh, following, uh, the following year, 1947, early in the season, New Zealand sent a team over. We played two tests against them, and from that series, the team to go to the, the UK, France and America. So your sh shoulder, shoulder repaired and you were able to hold yeah. the spot? Yeah, yeah. And I, I was a, I was the first, uh, I was the first row, front row forward pick. So I'm, I'm quite pleased about that. That's <laughs> so when you went to England, so did you have to give up your job, or how, I mean, you worked for Shell, or did Shell yeah. bring lenient again to you again, or? Yeah, Shell were, yeah. The what Shell who, who had paid me full pay in the four and a half years, due or whilst I was in the navy, came good again, and I was the only player. In that uh, squad that went to England, I was the only player being paid commercially. And the Shell Company said, well, uh, you know, we, we, so, we so want to long, encourage you to, to, to play. So, so how long you. were you away for then? Nine, nine months. Nine months? <laughs> so <laughs> That seems unbelievable. So how many were in the squad? It was 30. So you're all lifelong friends? Oh, know. yes. And we were. We were. There was... There was, I can't remember a, a, a bad word spoken throughout that nine months. And that's difficult when you get 30 men together. But they were a wonderful team. So when you were kitted out and things like that, the Australian Rugby Union, did you get pocket money or...? They... We got five bob a day. We got five bob a day for nine months. It was very, very amateur. And all accommodation paid for? Oh, well, if we stayed at the best hotels, we the the trip to England was was a, a lifetime experience. We although we were paid only five shillings a day, we stopped at every place we went to, right throughout England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, France, America, Canada. Come on the way home, we had the best of accommodation, and we went to places and we met people who we would have never have been able to meet otherwise. Like we, we, we were invited to uh, Buckingham Palace, we met the King and the Queen and the uh, Princess Margaret. And pres our present Queen was away on a honeymoon at the time. And, uh, and also we went to uh, St James Palace, uh, the, uh, the um, Duke of Gloucester and his wife, and the two had two small children. They were the host on that day. We went there. We went to Number Ten Downing Street for morning tea with Clement Attlee, who was then the who just uh, came into Prime Ministership from uh, Winston Churchill, and uh, Lord Mayor's functions. Uh, oh, wherever we went, we were wide and dying like, like royalty. So did you have to sing rugby songs? <laughs> we <laughs> used to be gentlemen all the time. We, we, we used to sing rugby songs in the bus, but very seldom out of the bus. <laughs> so how many games did you play on that tour then? We played 41 games. And you weren't beaten? Were you oh beaten? yes we were, yeah. So first of all the 41, of uh, the 41 games we, play, we played uh, 30 in the UK, now, that was the really the official part. We played that that first up thirty, and then we went over to France. We played five matches in France, and then we came home through Canada and America, playing oh. games in. Uh, we played games in on the west coast of Canada, uh, Vancouver, and also Victoria, and then we came down in onto the west coast of, of the USA and played. Uh, against three of the universities there, just as really as, as uh, well, fun, fun matches. And promotional. Ar Arnold Tanker, he was appointed as not only as manager, but as coach and sole selector. Now, with the entourage of people that they have to do those jobs, at least 12 people going on a, 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 a two or three week trip. They'll need this entourage. In, in those days, in 47, we had one a manager, 
who did his managerial jobs, coaching jobs, and selecting jobs. And he, he went, it was undisputed. He did have a, a secretary, Jeff Nasila, who kept solely to the secretarial work. So he organised a tour and made certain everything for the accommodations in the right place and all those things. So well, the, no, no, the, the, the home unions did all of that. All right, okay. But, but uh, officially, they were the only two people of the manager real estate, the manager and the secretary. Up that we went, and we were picked up in England, we picked up a physio and a baggage man, uh, and a, what they called a homes union, Representative, and he was the liaison between the, between the home unions and our, and our team. So nobody was sent home, or nobody was injured, and things like that. A yeah, thirty-man squad. They never thought that. of it. And if they had sent send anybody home, they would have had to send me home by ship. <laughs> <laughs> we were just a good ship. We were a good team, and we do. We, we, and we were the most successful team that, that Australia had had to that particular stage. We played. The 30 matches in England. So who were the notables in, in, in that team you played with? Well, Bill McLean was the captain. Uh, who were the notables? Trevor Allen, Cole Windham, Nick Shahady, uh, Ken Carney, Brian Piper, I can go, Terry McBride, Arthur Topkin, they were, um, they were. So, who was your halfback 5A? The halfback, the halfback, the first halfback was Cyril Burke. Wonderful halfback, wonderful halfback. Second halfback was Lord Corsi from Randwick. The 5A varied from Mick Kremen, who was a Randwick 5A, a very good 5A. And uh, the, the, but the chap who, uh, who got the job ahead of Mick Kremen was. Neville Emery, who was from the university and New Eton College. So uh, uh, it was a team of unknowns at that stage, except for the captain, Bill McLean, who had been chosen in 1939 for the trip. As you know, the 39 uh, team had to come back home without playing a game because the war had signed at that particular time. So they came back home without, and Bill McLean was the only survivor of, of, of uh, that 1939 to, to be picked in 1947. There was also a gnarled old second round forward by the name of Graham Cook, who at 34 years of age was not only the oldest foot forward, but he was the best forward of the whole pack. Great play, great play. But uh, as, as, with results, we we beat England eleven nil. We beat Scotland sixteen to seven. We beat Ireland sixteen to three, and we were beaten by Wales six nil. Two penalty goals to nil. Uh, that, that's a story in itself. But uh, was that, that at the, Cardiff? That was at Cardiff. Yes, we were ten points. Down before before they blew the whistle, but uh, in those four test matches we played, we never had a try score against us. So although we were, although we'd uh, lost one, it was only by penalties, and, and no other team, but, but before or since, has ever gone through a a a, a uh, program without having a try scored against them in the test matches. So then you came back from uh, England, was that your last time you represented or did you play more tests when you came home? No, uh, it wasn't my last time. We came home in 1948, uh, having played one match. We played France on January the 6th, 48, and that was the only, the only international game of rugby played that year. And then in '49, so '48 was in Australia. Yeah, yeah. yeah but there was, no, there was no representative games. No international representative games played in Australia in '48. In '49, uh, we had uh, the Maori All Blacks came over, and we played three, 
three test matches against them. And how'd you go against them? We 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 won one, we drew one, and we lost one. And 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 uh, at the end of that particular tour, uh, the Shell Company and I came to an agreement that uh, that uh, I would retire from major football. I was still playing club football, mm -hmm. but uh, so how old were you then? Twenty-eight. Twenty-eight. So it was your last. Uh, so today that'll be a young. Oh, young, young. Yes, yes. But in, in in those days, people had to look past yeah. football. Uh, that, you know, that was was totally amateur, and uh, uh, so you had at some stage of your life uh, to to put your family first. Uh, and, and, your, and your career first. And uh, 28 would have been about the average time of retiring. When the show company sent me to Forbes, I formed the Forbes Rugby Club. And uh, from there I captained the <coughs> combined country team against City, against the British Lions, against the All Blacks, and against the first... Uh, First Fiji, that was in the early 1950s. So were the scores creditable? Like when you played country, was country strong or they nor did... Peter, that's not a fair question. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I won't answer, but, but to say we, we didn't win any of the matches. <laughs> and when you played the All, the all Blacks, of course, I'd like that. Did they, they do the harker? Were they doing the harker then? Oh, yeah. or is that, is yeah. That... yeah, they were still doing that. Still, still so the harker, was, the harker was in when you played in 47? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. that was still a fearsome looking boss. <laughs> <laughs>